And welcome, everybody. It's great to have you for another week of the Wolfpack Coaches Show, presented by Lexus of Reno, who invites you to test drive a luxurious Lexus automobile today. For more information, you can visit Lexus.com. As always, we are live here at the Little Wall, just across from campus. Excited to be back for another week of the Coaches Show. The Wolfpack getting set to head down to Tallahassee this week. They'll take on Florida State coming up on Saturday afternoon. That game kicks off at 1230 Pacific time. We'll have all the coverage for you, beginning with a Bud Light tailgate show at 11 a.m. The Wolfpack coming off their first victory of the season last week, knocking off UC Davis in the home opener by a score of 36-7. to We'll talk about that game and also look at what's coming up this Saturday as the pack travels down to Tallahassee. A little bit later in the show, we'll talk with James Spady, who is the tight ends coach at the University of Nevada. We'll also hear from one of his pupils, Colby Arenzi, who is off to a terrific start in 2013. But we begin the show, as always, with head coach Brian Polian. And, Coach, first of all, congratulations on the victory on Saturday. You talked about wanting to see your team improve from week one to week two. What areas of growth did you see from the UCLA game into what your team accomplished Saturday night? Well, I think we were certainly more physical uh, on the offensive front. I thought we tackled significantly better. Uh, and, uh, you know, we knew we had to take some shots down the field. And uh, I thought that uh, Cody threw the ball, the deep ball, very well. And obviously for us to uh, have three explosive pass plays over the top, one of which that went for a touchdown, uh, that was encouraging because if people are going to load up the box, to try and stop the pistol run game, then, then we need to be able to take some shots down the field. And certainly we took some steps forward uh, on Saturday night doing that. I know this uh, is not all about you, but it is the, the first win for you as a head coach. You had your parents in the stands to watch. What did it mean to you to, to have that accomplishment and to have your family here as well to see it? Well, I certainly would have rather gotten it in the Rose Bowl, but uh, <laughs> uh, no, it was special. I mean, it, 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 there's only so many firsts in your life. And, uh, my first win as a head coach, and, and to have, luckily enough, to have my mom and dad here for it, uh, it was special. And it was, uh, you know, it's one of those nights uh, you don't want it to end because, you know, when you get the sun comes up the next morning, uh, it's time to go back to work, yeah. and what's done is done. But uh, uh, it was, uh, we enjoyed it. We hung around the office for a little while with, with my family, and then uh, towards the end of the night, my wife and I just... Uh, sat out on the deck, had a glass of wine, and, and just kind of celebrated a little bit. You know, I asked you last week on the pregame show what it meant having your dad especially there, and, and, and you talked about you know what an influence he's been, not just as a father, but obviously as a terrific football mind. When you get a chance to, to sit down and talk football with him, what, what kinds of things do you guys discuss? What are the conversations like? A lot about personnel, mm-hmm. uh, not, not necessarily X's and O's schematics, but a lot about personnel and managing the team and game management and approach of the game. And, and we, I mean, Saturday night was no different. I mean, when we had a chance to just sit the two of us, we, we talked a lot of football and what would you have done differently, what, you know, and, and in terms of um, sideline demeanor, that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> you know, he's, he's always been on me about keeping my cool with the officials, and, uh, you know, which is ironic because he's, he's – you know, dog cussing them from his box, <laughs> at, at, you know, for 30 years. But, uh, um, you know, we, we talk we talk more big picture stuff than we do the, the, the X's and O's and, and about personnel. But it's it's just great to have him, to lean on him, and, uh, and have that resource. You know, one thing you talked about a lot last week, and you talked to your team about this as well, don't take this team for granted. Be ready to play or you're going to get knocked off like so many other teams around the country did. I have to think that after seeing the way your team played, you, you're pretty happy with the way they responded to that message. Yeah, I thought, I thought we were mature in our preparation throughout the week. I thought they paid attention. I thought they knew who Davis's people were. Uh, you know, they, they had a pretty good feel of, of the opponent. And the, I think those things uh, were symbolic uh, of a team that, that really took their preparation seriously and it's not hard for Florida State to get your attention or UCLA when they're getting ready. I mean, they, they see those guys. They know they're real players. Um, you know, it, it took a mature team to uh, prepare for an FCS opponent the way they were prepared for anybody else, and I thought they did a good job of that. I want to remind the folks that are out there listening, if you have a question for Coach Pulling, you can tweet your questions to uh, at Nevada Wolfpack with the hashtag AskThePack, and uh, we'll ask your questions to Coach Pullian here on the Coach's Show tonight. You had a big play early in the game. Davis got the opening kickoff, and then just a couple of plays in, Brian Lane comes up with an interception to put you guys in great field position. How important was that play just to get your team off to a good start, get some early momentum going in the football? Oh, there's no doubt. We need, you know, we, we needed something good to happen early in the game, and, and um, 
you know, I, I, had int- I had intended if we had won the toss to take the ball because I felt like offensively it was a good matchup and I wanted to put the offense on the field and, and, and see if we could make something good happen. They won the toss, took the ball. Um, so, so, you know, we put the defense out there. And then, you know, you got Brian Lane, who we had trained to be a linebacker the whole training camp back there playing safety because of a – uh, of a roster situation, and he comes up and makes a big play, and it energized the sideline, it energized the team, and then for us to be able to convert that with a touchdown was was a big deal. You know, Brian Lane is a guy that we haven't talked a lot about, but I know just listening to you talk this week, you're, you're a real fan of what this guy brings to your defense, be it at linebacker or safety. You, you like the things that he can add for you on that side. Yeah, he's, he's an interesting guy. He's, he's physically big enough to be a linebacker, especially in what we do, but he, he, he's got a skill set that also translates to the defensive backfield. And for, for us to have a safety-making impact plays was a big deal because, frankly, in week one, we didn't get that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, you know, we're going to have a decision to make. Do we leave him back there? Do we shuffle him around? That's something we've got to figure out here in the next couple of weeks. You know, one, one thing you've talked about is kind of rebuilding the confidence of your defense and, and, and putting it in their minds that, hey, you guys can make plays. You can, you can stop teams on that side of the ball. You have so much youth, though, uh, over there. You, you've had a, a tough schedule here to begin the season. How difficult is that process in building these guys back up? It's been tricky. I mean, uh, let's face it. I mean, around here, uh, you know, the, the rip forever was that, uh, you know, they'd, been, they'd have been great had they just played some defense. And, and if that continues to be the mantra, eventually they're going to believe that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we got to build their confidence, but at the same time they got to earn it. Uh, and, and there were spots in the ball game Saturday night where I felt like they did. Certainly, you know, we we, uh, we fumbled the pitch on a speed option, turned the ball over in our own end, and our defense goes out there, goes three and out, knocks them backwards, puts them out of field goal range. I mean, that that's a big confidence builder for, for us to be able to handle a sudden change like that. And, you know, we made some plays. Now, we, we still need to get more heat on the passer. There's no doubt about that. But uh, we're getting better, and they're playing with more confidence. And, frankly, you know, we're still in a new system, and, and there's, not, there's, there's nothing that can replace game experience. So the more we play in live games and, and, and function within the system, I think the better off we'll be. One of the things we talked about last week is some of the younger guys that maybe had earned more playing time. And you brought up a couple of guys on the defensive side of the ball, and uh, I wanted to ask you about them and just what you saw from them in the game against UC Davis. And let me start with Elijah Mitchell, the cornerback spot. That's a difficult position to play as a true freshman, but you're getting him more and more reps in practice. You're getting him more time in games. What did you see from him against the Aggies? I, I I thought he did a really nice job. He had a great PBU uh, breakup, um, you know, in the second half. I, I, he didn't play scared. He, he looked just fine. When you put a true freshman out there in the corner and then you don't notice him, that's a good problem. Yeah. You know, uh, and, uh, you know, I'd expect his reps to continue to go up. He's, he's practicing great, and he's got, he's got a mental and emotional maturity beyond his years which is enabling him to, to handle all this. We saw Ian Sale make a big play early in the game. They tried to reverse. He was in the backfield to, to bring the guy down. It seems like he's another guy that's getting more and more plays, and it seems like with each passing day maybe he's getting more comfortable. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, people forget that the year Ian was at Kansas State before he went to the junior college, he redshirted. So his, uh, you know, his appearance in the Rose Bowl was his first Division One A college experience, and we talked about guys needing to improve significantly from week one to week two, and he's somebody that jumps out. Uh, Sometimes it looked a little fast for him at UCLA against Davis. He looked far more comfortable uh, out there and and certainly was more productive. Let's talk about your special teams. I think there was some good. Do we have to? Well, well, (laughs) I think there was some good, and there there was also some things that I know that you want to get cleaned up. But I just wanted to make this point that uh, a lot of times head coaches aren't maybe real involved in special teams. I think you're probably as involved with special teams as, as any head coach in the country, given your background and your involvement with it in the past. Yeah, and, and look, I mean, we have some issues, and we got to get them fixed. There's no doubt about it. Uh, one of the tricky things about the kicking game is when you come in new and you don't know the team, uh, placing personnel in the right spots can be a little bit tricky. We've kind of figured that out here in the first two weeks. We got guys at some spots where when it got to be live and the lights were on, the things that you can't replicate in practice, they're seeing live. Uh, you know, some guys maybe needed to be in some different spots, and we're starting to move them around. And, and you know, a part of it, too, is just we have a freshman kicker. Yep. I mean, the, the kickoff return that comes out on us 50 yards is, is supposed to be kicked in the right corner. Everybody's running to the right corner, and the ball's out on the left hash. 
And, and so it's not just, hey, this guy missed the tackle at the point of attack. There were about four different things that we did really poorly on that, on that long kickoff return that we've got to get fixed. Some are personnel, some are technique, some are as easy as, hey, the ball's supposed to be in the right corner. It can't be on the left hash. So, you know, it, it's a process, and, and we're getting better now. You know, Gabriel had two tackles inside the 20 against, you know, what we felt was a really, really good kickoff return unit. And uh, Chase Tenpenny had a fantastic night, dropped two punts inside the 10, and, uh, and Brent made his field goals. You know, we had some issues snapping the ball, but Matt Gallus has been dealing with a wrist, and, and uh, he tried to give it a go. Unfortunately, we bounced one back there, and as soon as we saw that, we put Tyler Wilson in, and, you know, that's the way we have to go now. Yeah. And, you know, on the positive side, you talk about those punts for Tenpenny that he killed inside the 10. Marcus Smith gets down there to down the ball. I mean, those are big plays to back a team up against their own goal line. There's no doubt. And defensively, we've got to keep him down there because right. that's his – I mean, if you can pin a team down and then keep him three and out and force him to punt, you get the ball in the 40, that's as good as a turnover. I mean, you've got a short field. To me, you know, you pin a team down there and keep them down there, that's as good as a turnover, and we've got to be able to do that. All right, Wolfpack playing at Florida State coming up on Saturday. Again, that game kicks off at 12.30 Pacific time, and we'll have all the coverage beginning at 11 a.m. Live here at the Little Waldorf Saloon, proud to be Reno's game day headquarters and home for Wolfpack fans since 1922, the Little Waldorf Saloon, where history is made and traditions are celebrated. We'll be back. More of the Wolfpack Coaches Show presented by Lexus of Reno coming up right after this.
All right, we're back with more of the Wolfpack Coaches Show presented by Lexus of Reno. Live here at the Little Wall. We'll be here every Wednesday night from 7 to 8 o'clock talking Wolfpack football with head coach Brian Polian as well as uh, some of our other guests. And just a reminder that you can tweet your questions to Nevada Wolfpack. Use the uh, hashtag AskThePack. And we do have some Twitter questions for Coach uh, relating to this week's game against uh, Florida State. One of the questions that came in via Twitter, Coach, is what are the biggest adjustments for your team after playing a club like UCLA now going into taking another really good team in Florida State? Well, I think we're, I think we'll be more ready for the speed uh, of Florida State, although they, they might be top to bottom a little bit faster than UCLA. I, I think, you know, we kept talking about, hey, guys, the speed of the game when you get to the Rose Bowl is going to be faster than it was in training camp, and I think it, it took a little while to adjust to that. Um, you know, I think now going down to Florida, uh, I, I don't think they'll be as shocked by it uh, as they, they might have been in the, in the first portion of the UCLA game. Speaking of speed, uh, another question via Twitter asking about DeAndre Fuller, who, of course, is a big-time speed guy, and wondering about his status and whether or not he might see the field for you this week. That's an interesting question. Uh, we had a situation with DeAndre where uh, uh, we had an NCAA uh, eligibility question regarding his high school transcript, which was no fault of his own, mm-hmm. it was no fault of ours. Uh, he took the advice of... Um, uh, the guidance counselor down in Texas did what he was supposed to do, um, and the NCAA questioned it. And in typical NCAA fashion, it, it took uh, nearly three weeks to get an answer. Uh, in that time, he was not eligible to play. We were not allowed to play him in the game. So, you know, we had him on the scout team, and, and he was continuing to improve. But now we've reached a point where we've just now gotten clearance to put him in games, and we've got to make a decision as a staff, uh, having lost the three weeks, uh, what's best for the young man and for the program in the long term. Should we redshirt him at this point, or should we consider playing him? And to be honest with you, I'm not sure we've reached that decision yet. We're only at game three. Uh, we've still got the whole conference slate still to go. Uh, that will be something that, frankly, will be fluid. Uh, I will tell you this, you know, whatever decision we make will be uh, not only in the best interest of the young man, but also in the best interest of the program moving forward. Another question via Twitter was uh, about Don Jackson, who, of course, missed the game on Saturday with uh, a sore ankle and what his status is and if he'll be able to go for you on Saturday. He's like day, he's day-to-day like the rest of us. We all are. Uh, yeah, we're, we're uh, you know, we're getting closer to the game. He's getting better. But, again, um, as it as – it, uh, in regards to this game, um, we're not going to be judged by what we do against Florida State in early September. We're going to be judged at the end of the year about, you know, by what we do in the league. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm not going to rush anybody back uh, for this one, knowing that we got a long way to go and we haven't played a Mountain West game yet. More of a, a bigger picture question came from somebody here in the audience. Don, if you are here with us at the Little Wall, there's a pieces of paper on your table. You can write down the questions and uh, submit them. But uh, the question was about uh, involving the community. and said, I appreciate your efforts to involve the students more. Uh, what other ideas might you have to help get the community more involved in behind this football program? Well, the first thing would be a night like tonight. You know, encourage people to come out and hang out with us. I, I absolutely love the, the wall. I was here on uh, Monday with my family. So I'm not only here working tonight, I'm a loyal patron. Um, you know, I, I thought the Wolfpack Walk was really cool for the first time, but I think as word spreads, uh, you know, through our fan base that we can certainly get more people out to that. I know our guys enjoyed it. Um, you know, and, and I'm kind of at the point now, I really, I really enjoyed uh, to the alma mater, uh, singing the alma mater with the students after the game. I thought our guys got a kick out of that. I think our alma mater is a verse too long. We might want to <laughs> choose maybe one and three as opposed to being out there for the whole thing. But, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're doing some things that I thought were pretty well received. Uh, and, frankly, uh, I'm, open to, uh, I'm open to suggestions. I mean, the, the, the people that support this university and this program have been here far longer than I have. So, um, you know, I'm at Brian Poley, and if people want – if people got some ideas – Feel free to shoot them out to me. That question was from uh, Rick. Sarah asks, uh, how do you get yourself ready before a game? Curious how the head coach gets himself ready to go out before a game. It's interesting. I, um, I eat breakfast with the team, but I get too nervous. I can't eat the pregame meal. Um, I find that I end up uh, 
when I get to the stadium, whether we're a home or on the road, the first thing I do is throw a, a pair of shorts and T-shirt on, and I go run around the field for a little while to try and get rid of that nervous energy that I have. And really, then it's just, it's uh, as a player, trying to key yourself up. As a coach, you're literally trying to bring yourself down. I'm trying to get myself calmed down. So I, I try to find a quiet space somewhere here at home. It's my office on the road. I'll just find a corner of the locker room and, you know, sit there with a nurse, a, a Diet Pepsi, and, and uh, you know, listen to my my iTunes or whatever mm-hmm. and just try and even out a little bit uh, because I am a guy that I, I will get a little bit too keyed up before the game. And, and as a coach, that's not a good thing. You're just you're trying to keep yourself even keeled and, and clear, clear of thought. All right, we appreciate the questions. And, again, you can tweet your questions at Nevada Wolfpack. Use the hashtag AskThePack, and we can get your uh, questions on here for Coach Polian. Let's talk about this week and going down to Florida State. Uh, obviously, they were off a week ago, but a lot of people saw their opener on national television against Pitt. What did you take away uh, from that game watching the Seminoles? Well, I was really impressed with Jameis Winston. He was incredibly accurate, as the numbers would, would show. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, for a new defensive scheme, uh, they've really – uh, adapted pretty well, and they've done a nice job. They're more multiple than they used to be. They will kick in, in and out of a three- and a four-man front, uh, w- which uh, will present some issues. And, uh, you know, I, I thought, you know, there was a lot of talk coming out of Tallahassee about how unlucky they were during uh, the off season and then training camp, how they had lost some top receivers due to injuries. And then you look at the jokers they're rolling out there now, and <laughs> they're still pretty good. You know, they're, they're yeah. big, and they can run, and – you know, that's really, you know, people ask all the time, what's the difference between BCS level football and a high mid-major like us in the Mountain West? When uh, we got guys that can run, but our guys that can run are going to be 5'10", 5'11", 180 pounds. They have guys that can run that will be six foot one, two 205, 210, that that will have 10, 500 meter speed. So, you know, that that's going to be one of the challenges for us, their athleticism and can we do some things to, to counteract that and slow it down a little bit? You always hear when, when people talk about the athletes, <clears throat> excuse me, in Florida, they talk about just a different type of athlete. I think it was Chip Kelly a couple of years ago when Oregon played LSU, and he said, hey, we got good athletes, but that's just a different breed on that side. I mean, is that true? You've been around the country recruiting. Yeah, well, I mean, football is such a religion in Florida, and they practice. It's, you know, Florida, Southern California, Texas, uh, Ohio, Louisiana, those, you know, those high school football hotbeds. Those guys are training year-round. I mean, the, the, the day of the three-sport athlete in high school is rare nowadays. I mean, these guys are they're training year-round. And, and uh, the, you know, the trick about the schools down south and, and, and specifically the BCS schools down south, our front-line guys are going to look, you know, a lot of our front-line guys are going to look like their front-line guys. It's when you, the depth mm-hmm. starts to creep up because they'll roll them out two and three deep. And, uh, you know, we don't have depth like that. It's just, you know, the, the, the personnel is just not the same. Not that we don't love our guys, and I mean, we, they're ours, we love them, and we're going to go play, but it is different. I yeah. mean, it, it is. To, to ignore that would be naive. We're going to talk Nevada tight ends here coming up uh, in just a few minutes, but uh, O'Leary, their tight end, got off to a great start. Uh, you talk about Winston throwing the ball, and O'Leary was on the receiving end of three touchdowns. He, he had a great start to the year. Well, I tell you what, O'Leary should be thankful just to be alive. I mean, he was involved in a motorcycle accident. When you see it, you just say, thank God. I can't believe the guy got up and walked away from it. Uh, so I, I'm very happy for the kid that he's just healthy because when I saw the video, the – the accident he was involved in, you said, oh, oh my gosh. Um, and, and, yeah, I mean, he's he's a guy that came out of high school with a lot of hype and he never quite lived up to it. And all of a sudden he has this unbelievable breakout game, three touchdowns, a bunch of yards. I mean, he, he was impressive. What are the areas of emphasis for your team as you go into this game? What, what, what are you really trying to drive into your team going into this ball game? Compete that, we, that no matter what happens, whether we're up 14 or down 14, that we continue to compete. Uh, that uh, that we that we come out of the game, look at the film, and say, you know what, we're better than we were when we went in. Because if we if we can do those things, and look, something bad's going to happen in this game. Something bad happens in every game. Mm-hmm. You know, the trick is how do you handle adversity? Do you keep your poise? Do you do you do you bounce back? Do you keep you know? Are you mentally, emotionally, and physically tough? And and we're going to have to prove that this week because we will face some adversity in this game. 
and and you know how we react to it is is going to be very important to me because let's face it we got some tough we got some tough ball games ahead of us in the conference so you know this experience down at Tallahassee should should help us prepare for those. In talking about the Davis game, we talked about the lane interception. You said, hey, it was important for us to have something go right early in the ball game. Even more important maybe this week to have something, some success early in the game against Florida State? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's important in any game. But, yeah, to to go out, uh, you know, we can't do what we did at at UCLA where we, you know, we, we get a first down, first series out of the box, and we have a chance to get another one, and we drop a ball, and then we get a you know a negative play. We can't we can't do that. We've got to have we've got to make positive things happen early in the ball game, so that so that we can get our confidence going and feel good about it. Coach, great to have you here as always. Have a safe trip to Tallahassee. We'll see you on Saturday. I appreciate it. Thanks for having All me. Right. Head coach Brian Polian here with us on the Wolfpack Coaches Show, presented by Lexus of Reno, live here at the Little Waldorf Saloon. Again, we're here every Wednesday night talking Wolfpack football. We've got more for you coming up right after this. All right, coach.
Welcome back to the Wolfpack Coaches Show presented by Lexus of Reno. Live here at the Little Waldorf Saloon. The uh, Wolfpack getting set to take on Florida State coming up on Saturday in Tallahassee. Again, that game kicks off at 12.30 Pacific time. Our coverage begins with the Bud Light tailgate show at uh, 11 a.m. Hey, going back to last week, the Baselite big block of the game for the second week in a row was Joel Batonio. That's brought to you by Baselite Concrete Products. Remember, don't just fight it. Baselighted. Joel has been off to a terrific start, and he'll have another big challenge against the Florida State front coming up on Saturday afternoon. Well, we are pleased to welcome back to the uh, coaches' show one of our favorites, James Spady, the uh, tight ends coach at the University of Nevada, is with us. It's good to see you again. How has the uh, start of the season been for you here? Thanks a lot. First of all, I didn't know I was one of your favorites. But yes, you are. I'm going to yes. accept the you and your leather helmets are one of our favorites. Here. Oh, my leather. All wax selection at UTEP back in 1941. You had a wonderful career there, by the way. 1941. Yes, you had a wonderful run there at uh, at UTEP, and you got out of El Paso. Congratulations well, to you both. Uh, see, you got it wrong. You got it wrong. We didn't actually wear helmets. Oh, you didn't back then. Oh, okay. Those were invented later. That's right. That's good. It came That's along good. sometime later. <laughs> what is what has this year been like for you? Obviously, with with Coach Polian coming in, a lot of new coaches, but uh, you remain here on the staff. What, what has this year been like for you so far? I tell you what, it's. From start to finish, it's been exciting. Let me just tell you that um, being involved in a transition from from one uh, leadership group, one head coach to another, uh, that that's a pretty exciting thing. The other night, I got a little bit misty. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I haven't admitted this publicly yet, but uh, I was sitting there, and I was in the press box, and I was watching Coach Polian on the sideline. I thought to myself, how many times do you get to be on the ground floor of someone's initial entry as a head football coach. This was his first win as a head football coach, and I thought, wow, what an honor to be a part of that, to help uh, you know, bring that into, uh, into reality, and I thought that was really awesome. We had a question from somebody here in the crowd that was curious about the differences between working for Coach Polian and working for Coach Alt the last couple of years. You know, I shouldn't have known that question was coming. I did not prepare. I was going to stay away from it. But somebody in the crowd asked. I thought I'd I did not prepare a prescribed answer, so here we go. Uh, well, I mean, you know, each individual who coaches, myself included, we all have different ways uh, of doing things. I like to use the phrase, uh, you know, we're all going to get to Chicago. We just all have different routes sure. to get there. And so uh, the biggest thing is just to, to adapt and, and uh, get comfortable with the way you get to Chicago as opposed to the way the other guy gets to Chicago. And, and uh, to be very honest with you, it's been an exciting ride. I'm, I'm really enjoying myself, uh, my 21st season coaching, and I'm having a great time. I feel like a rookie. James Spady is our guest, the tight ends coach here at the uh, University of Nevada. We're going to hear from uh, your main pupil coming up in just a few minutes. Colby Arenzi is yeah. going to join us. But, you know, you lose a terrific tight end, obviously, in Zach Sudfeld last year who had uh, a great run. But uh, Colby, a guy that has played a lot, what, what does he bring to this position for you? I got to tell you, I've been very fortunate. Um, we've had some really good tight ends here at the University of Nevada. And, boy, I walked into a situation where I'm coaching Virgil Green and Zach Sudfeld and Colby Arenze. And, and all these guys, um, they, they really bring something to the table just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they make you look like a lot better coach than you really are. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's the bottom line. So I've been very fortunate to, to, to be involved with some guys like that. And, and I got to tell you, Kobe's one of the best. He is one of the absolute best. Uh, he, he prepares. Uh, the guy works hard, and, and it's a pleasure to coach a guy like that. Interesting with the, the new staff coming in, but the system remains the same with the pistol offense. How do you see the role of the tight end within the pistol? Well, I tell you that that's one of the most exciting things um, in terms of transitioning from Coach Alt to to Coach Polian. Um, I've been able to be, be on the ground floor of watching our offense evolve. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the tight end position is kind of the microcosm for, for that uh, evolve evolution. Evolution. You got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got to work that out. <laughs> I yeah, graduated from Utah back in 1941. Yeah, I'm so. not going to say anything. Right. James Spady is our guest here on the <laughs> Wolfpack Coaches Show presented by, uh, by Lexus of Reno. You've had some injuries at the tight end position. Uh, Stephen Jeffers, Randy Horton have been out. Uh, but it's also allowed you then to, to work with some of these younger guys and to see some more of them. Uh, you, you hate to have anybody hurt, and you never want to see anybody go down with injury. But at the same time, is it a blessing for some of these younger guys that they get more practice reps and, and hopefully are more ready to help the team? Well, it absolutely is. And, and as you said, it's very unfortunate that, that you know, we would have uh, those injuries and, and those guys couldn't uh, help us out. But uh, I can tell you that two years ago, uh, Kobe was a beneficiary of, right. of some 
unfortunate things that happened to uh, Zach Sutfeld when he broke his leg at, at, uh, at the uh, Oregon game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kobe got a chance to play for us, and, and, and you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, really did a fantastic job, at, at, you know, coming. He prepared to be the backup, and he wound up being the starter, and, and he performed uh, really well for us. And I'm telling you, it was a benefit to have him have to be uh, pushed into action. Uh, the guys that were behind him had to be pushed into action, and uh, it helps us out um, tremendously later on down the line. And so here we are two years later, and, and uh, I don't think we really skipped to be uh, in the position because Kobe's a really solid addition for us. You know, we, we joked about your, your time at UTEP, but you played there. You spent a lot of time coaching. They're very familiar yeah. with the state of Texas. And, you know, one thing Coach Polian has talked about coming in here is the importance of recruiting the state of Texas. And uh, with your background there, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about that and why is it so important to be able to get into that state and try to get some of those players out? Well, I was, I was extremely excited from, a, you know, an individual personal standpoint uh, just because I am familiar with Texas. I am from Texas and, and um, have, have recruited Texas for most of my career. And so I do know that uh, there are a lot of good football players walking around in Texas who wind up at the lower levels or at schools that, uh, you know, maybe wouldn't have had a chance at a kid like that. Because there are so many kids there, uh, football is so important in the state of Texas and there's so many guys that play it. Uh, there's not enough places for him to go mm-hmm. and, and play high-level football. Uh, a school like uh, University of Nevada, we can go in the state of Texas and we can do really well um, taking the number twos and the number threes and bringing them here uh, to contribute to our, our, um, our football family, I should say. Uh, and then occasionally we'll, we'll get us a number one. Um, we'll get us a guy that, that if we can work hard enough, we can convince him that this is a place for them to, to thrive. I have heard from others that recruiting in Texas can be different than, let's say, recruiting California or Florida or someplace like that because it's really hard to get a foothold in there to establish yourself. Is that true, and does that help you because of the background and all the time you've spent in the state of being able to get that foothold where maybe it's more difficult for an outsider coming? Yeah, I believe that's true to a certain extent. I mean, uh, you know, nothing is is as serious as everybody makes it out to be, but... I got to tell you though that there is a good old boy network down there, and if you if you're an outsider coming in, I mean, there's there's going to be some difficulty in just getting comfortable uh, with your recruiting area, number one. Um, and so it, it's a good thing that we have the connections. I think uh, Coach Polian has has um, developed a, a, a really nice. Uh, just a name down there in Texas. Those guys knew him when he was at Texas A&M, and he has recruited there in and out. And so when I go into a school, um, just my individual knowledge of that school is important, but it's even more important when I go in and they can recognize that, yeah, Brian Polian's your boss, right? Yeah. Well, tell us about him. Tell us how it's going and that kind of thing. That's, that's going to help uh, just – you know, bolster our profile. Yeah. James Spady is our guest here on the Wolfpack Coaches Show. One thing I wanted to hit on uh, before you leave, and we were talking about this a little bit during the break, you had a really unique opportunity fairly early in your coaching career to do internships in the National Football League with both the Packers and uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. I wonder if you could just give us uh, kind of a brief synopsis of what that experience was like and how much that helped you, especially as a a young coach, develop to to the point that you've gotten to now. Yeah, great experience, right? It's You know, you get an opportunity to go and spend time on the coaching staff of of, uh, an NFL team, and that's the highest level uh, of what we do. Mm -hmm. And so that in itself is is already an honor. It's already a, a learning experience that you need to take seriously. And uh, as a young coach, I went in and I did those internships, and I learned a, a ton of football that, that I wouldn't have been exposed to otherwise. I got a chance to meet people that, uh, that helped uh, my career along the way and those kinds of things. And, and I tell you, it's just an invaluable asset to, to be able to uh, draw on. If, if you can ever get an internship, if you can ever get involved with that program, uh, I think it's a it's a worthwhile venture. That's awesome. Coach, yeah. we always appreciate you coming down and being part of the show. Thanks so much for being here tonight. I enjoyed it, Ryan. Thanks. All right, James Betty, tight ends coach at the University of Nevada, our guest. We'll take a break. Come back with Colby Arenzi right after this.
Hey, folks, Jones West Ford is proud to sponsor the Wolfpack. Reminds you, the next home game is coming up a week from Saturday. The Wolfpack hosting Hawaii in the Mountain West opener, and you can buy your tickets by calling 348-PACK or at NevadaWolfpack.com. Jones West Ford, trucks built tough like the Wolfpack. We continue here from the little wall. We're tight end heavy tonight. James Spady was in here, and now Colby Orenzi, the starting tight end for the Wolfpack, joins us here. Coach Spady had some nice things to say about you. Did you pay him well before he came up here or what? He, he's a big Colby Orenzi fan, apparently. I was, I was thinking that exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't know he passed away with me. But. So, well, next time he starts yelling at you on the practice field, you say, hey, remember the other night when you said all those 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 nice things about me? Oh, funny. Well, it's a new year for you. It's a, your senior year now, and uh, I think it's interesting, you know, Coach Spady brought this up that it was just a couple of years ago that Zach got hurt and you were kind of thrown into the mix uh, as a tight end and had a terrific year uh, a couple of years ago, and then... And last season with Zach coming back, you and he teamed up and played together. But what is this like for you now? A senior year starting, you know this is is your job. What's this year been like for you so far? Well, in the past I've had a lot of guidance with uh, good tight ends before me. And, um, you know, with Zach and everything. And, and this year has just been, you know, it's been a blessing. It's just been awesome. Um, it doesn't matter how many times you get the ball. I just, you know, go out and play with the guys that I love playing with. Colby Arenzi is our guest here on the uh, Wolfpack Coaches Show. Uh, I asked Cody Fajardo at the beginning of the season, I, I asked him about having you as, as the tight end, and he brought up, you know, hey, a couple of years ago you had a, a fantastic year. But, uh, you know, Cody said, hey, not only is this a guy that, that I really have a lot of confidence in as a tight end, we've had a great relationship off the field. How much does that does that help, having that relationship off the field, to, to lead to chemistry on the field for you guys? Oh, me and Cody get along so well. It's, it's great. I mean, uh we get we of course we get along off the field, but on the field like just practices and and going into the games and we're able to connect. Um, like we we look at each other, and we just know what we're we're thinking. You know, it's just like it, it's a great connection. I mean, on the, every play, we you know, it's just like hey man, you gonna you know do this or whatever. You know, and just have like a little mind connection. It's it's pretty funny. It's hard to explain, but now you know a little bit about the quarterback position because you played some quarterback yeah. in high school. So yeah. other times you have to pull Cody aside, give him a few pointers on things he should be doing back there at that spot. Yeah, I, I tried that before. And I, it, doesn't go, it doesn't go too well. Didn't go well. Yeah, no. Cody didn't want your advice? Yeah, no. Wow. I, yeah, I gave him a couple, uh, couple tips and pointers there, here and there, but uh, he kind of shoots me down. Yeah. Now, uh, we, we talk about you playing quarterback. You actually hold the – career passing record, I believe it is, or single season passing record at your high school? Oh, uh, yeah. Is that accurate? Yeah, uh, yeah I think okay. it's accurate. So yeah. record setting. And in JC, you were a wildcat? I was. I, uh, my gray shirt year, I actually played quarterback, and I was just, you know, the gray shirt quarterback and practice player and scout team quarterback. And then uh, my next year, uh, they brought a bounce back in, so uh, I wasn't good enough to start. <laughs> so I... Uh, so I said, you know what, I'll, play, uh, I'll ask if I can play some tight end. And uh, Wildcat quarterback is where they put me as well. So yeah. I was able to score a few touchdowns there, too. Well, it worked out very well. You obviously had some folks interested in you as a tight end, and, and you landed here at the University of Nevada. What was it that, that ultimately brought you here to play for the Wolfpack? Um, location, um, close to my Washington, where uh, my hometown is. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was between this and uh, Eastern Michigan was my other offer. But... Uh, but uh, I've heard a lot about the Wolfpack, and Coach uh, Dante Williams was here before, mm -hmm. and uh, I think he was able to, you know, get my connection in there. So yeah. um, I was once I once I came here, I loved it. I, you know, I talked to Coach Alton, and, and uh, you know, Hall of Fame coach. I was just there was no no better place I could be. Coach Spady talked about the ever evolving role of the tight end within the Pistol offense. How do you see the tight end within this offense? Uh, the apex is what I, like to, <laughs> what I like to say. You know, we're at the the point of attack at every, uh, at almost every play, and and I love it. I mean, it's just it's almost like going back to a quarterback position. You know, I used to think about you know I used to, I get the ball every snap, and and you get it in the playmaker's hands every snap like Cody. Well, we're right at the point of attack every time, and and so I. I it's a great position to be at, especially at Nevada. You've had some great experiences, obviously, in your career. A couple years ago, you had the, the kind of breakout game at Texas Tech. You played at UCLA to start this year. How do you look at this week now, going down to play at a place like Florida State? Uh, it's just, you know, it's another game, but it's it's a, it's a big game, and, and it's a game that I want to attack, you know, just like every other one. You know, it, it's it doesn't matter who you're going against, you know, it's – we're good enough to play with whoever, and mm -hmm. and that's uh, that's the mentality you got to go in with it. And so it's 
they play a lot like UCLA, so it's, it's going to be a great, great battle for us, and, and especially me to go against a, a great player. I've heard Coach Polian use the word opportunity a lot. Is that how you guys kind of look at this? This is a great opportunity for you guys to go up against a team like this? Yes, yes, that's exactly it. It, it is a great opportunity for us to, uh, to go down in, in a different stadium that we haven't really played and, and – uh, just, you know, give them, give them heck, you know. That's, that's what it's all about. All right, well, it'll be a new experience. Hopefully it's a fun experience for you on Saturday, 1230 again for the kickoff. We'll have the uh, Bud Light Tailgate Show beginning at 11 a.m. Colby, it's always a pleasure to have you. Thanks right. for coming down and spending a few minutes with us tonight. We Thank appreciate you. it. appreciate it. All right, Colby Renzi, starting tight end for the Wolfpack. Our guest will take a break, come back and wrap things up right after this.
Wolfpack action. You can keep up on all the bad athletics with News 4's Wolfpack All Access, presented by Champion Chevrolet. Highlights, coaches' perspective, and more. Wolfpack All Access airs every Sunday night after NFL Sunday Night Football, only on News 4. It's Nevada and Florida State in Tallahassee coming up on Saturday. That ball game kicks off at 12.30 Pacific time. We'll be on the air with the Bud Light Tailgate Show at 11 a.m. Thanks for joining us for the Wolfpack Coaches Show, presented by Lexus Arena, live right here at the Little Wall. We'll see you next Wednesday night.